Please don't touch anything. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to law. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's choice. As you will also report to me in the event of your death. Whereupon, I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Burial in the unfortunate event of a fatality. Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a... Thank you, no. I despise the cereals. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay. And that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Not a bad idea, but I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that w Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doc? I am a Spacer's Choice Certified Surgeon. And if you must know, I can stitch a severed thumb with a 58% chance of avoiding gangrene. A ship? Dear me. You seem to have lost the ability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. This is what happens when you let your imagination run wild. I don't approve of fantasizing. 
It's a dreadful habit, corrosive to the mental faculties. Vicar Maximilian, our man from the OSI, here to spread the message of scientism like a soothing balm upon a feverish head. Or so you'd expect. You'll find him in our local church, probably neglecting his duties. He doesn't seem to like us much. The vicar has not been with us long, and in his relatively short tenure in Edgewater, gives off the distinct whiff of superiority. Go ahead. Edgewater has been good to me. I consider myself privileged to work. I am never wanting for work, not since the plague started. The plague's come at us with a vengeance this year. Lost six workers in as many months. I wouldn't call them good workers, mind you. If they were any good, they'd have been treated. Still. Fever, chills, fatigue, aching, vomiting, an excess of phlegm, a tendency towards belt... Whatever it may be, I have developed my own palliative. Boiled canid liver and a splash. Company policy, friend. We don't have enough medicine to treat all of us, so we treat the best among us. Mr. Thompson's brainchild. Have you met him yet? Thoughtful-looking fellow, stares out of his office most hours. Hey, I saw that. What do you think you're doing? Just keep your fingers to your own self, okay? Yes, Mr. Thompson. I'm... Well, uh, did, uh... Did Mr. Thompson send you... Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. And what are you doing here? Visiting? Well, let me give you the grand tour. This here's my domicile. And there's the door. What? No. I mean, uh, I might be. That depends on who's asking. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. You know? I'm dying. I'm not long for this. It's... There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I... Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly... More like the company won't treat me because I'm not healthy enough. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders on. I have it on good authority. There's a gang of them squatting there. I advise stepping softly. So you'll do it? You oblige me with... Just keep your head down when you're in there. Marauders have taken over. Probably tracking mud all over. I know that. 
but I got nobody else to turn. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but I never... a mistake working for Abernathy. Excuse me. I'm Esther Blaine, Spacer's Choice Actuary. I overheard your talk with Abernathy. I hope you're not thinking about getting him that medicine. Abernathy is a well-known hypochondriac. Anthracillin is wasted on him. You're better off selling it to me instead. All I'm saying is Abernathy's worked in this town longer than some of us been alive. How do I put this gently? He's, uh... He's got a lot of cobwebs up in his attic. I probably shouldn't tell you. Don't want you implicated for what I'm trying to do. Alright. Here's a summary. A lot of sick people in this town. And we don't have the medicine to treat them all. Can't reach out to corporate without crossing a river of red tape. So I'm reaching out to you. I'm paid better than Abernathy. Whatever he's giving you, I will do you one better. That's all I can ask of you. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees, and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. If you're not familiar with board law, you ought to be. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative. Which... Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was van-
First of all, that's a horrible thing to say. Secondly, yes, we did. When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know Eugene was an asset to us all. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own... Sorry, I'll just be a minute. Thank the law. You ever swung? I'm talking about mechanical so- That's right. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing? Shoulder to shoulder with the resistance. I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans mostly, some spaces chaw, few bit cards. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the resistance a bad name. They have sent a scout, prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the Resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent! A stroke of inspiration from the law itself! Here, yeah, I've been saving up a couple of bits for just such a project. Go on. I'm Ludwig Miller, Associate Security Officer for Transportation. Of unofficially, strictly between you and me, 
I am the only thing standing between Edgewater and Total and the... Fancy threads. That... You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Huh. Oh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Yeah? The colony ship? Are you talking about that old rumor? Some great big starship packed full of colonists what got lost in the Aether never to be found again? <laughs> Ain't heard that one since I was but a stripling. Can't say it was terribly convincing far as rumors go. Is there a reason you asking? All right, easy. Look, I don't know what's got you caterwauling about hope this and colony that, but you need to stop, or there's gonna be trouble. Something I can do for you? Yeah? What about him? Well, yeah. It's what I'm contractually obligated to do. What's this about? Yeah. Funny thing, Eugene's body ain't where it's supposed to be. The no when I woke up, his body was gone, spirited away, vanished. The footprints nearby suggested that Eugene was stolen by marauders. Let me know if you find any. 